Okay, so I was just working this uh, old photo that I took a few years ago through um, Photoshop to see if I could do a bit of a rescue job on the uh, sky here. And I thought it would make quite a good topic actually because one of the methods I'm going to show you and I think I've shown you before. And so, you know, you might get something from this. Uh, anyway, so this shot, I took it in uh, Western Australia about three or four years ago, I think. And, um, you know, with the sunny conditions and the really strong blue and the strong yellow from the foreground here, the uh, the camera kind of struggled to get the colors exactly correct. And the exposure is obviously really quite underexposed, as you can see. And so there's just a couple of steps that I'll show you how to uh, to do or show you what I did to just kind of bring that back and, and do a bit of a rescue job on it. And so the first thing I'm going to do is add a curves adjustment layer. And I'm going to use this as my main color correction um, adjustment. But rather than use any of the kind of methods that I've shown you before, what I'm going to do this time is just going to be a little bit more accurate with the way that I pick the uh, red, green and blue values. So I'll grab the uh, color sampler tool over here. And what I'm going to do is place a point in the image where um, I can use as a reference point for my highlights. So to get that reference point and to know where to drop that eyedropper, I'm going to press Alt or Option on the keyboard and hold that down and grab this highlight slider and move this up towards the left hand side. And what I'm looking for here, as these colors start to creep into the image, what I'm looking for is the first burst of pure white. And as we can see there, that's kind of just coming through there in the sky. So just keeping my eye on that and uh, trying to remember exactly where that is, I'm going to place that eyedropper there. And as I do that, you can see this info box pops up. If it doesn't show uh, when you do this yourself, if you try it out, then you can just go to um, Window and then Info or F8. So uh, yeah, I've done that now. And what that's done is give me some uh, RGB values for the highlights. So now I'm going to take this slider, put it all the way down again. And what I'll do next is, you can see here these RGB values, it's basically saying the brightest part of the image is only like 162, 163, whereas, you know, we can go all the way up to 255, which is pure white. So, and you can see here from the histogram, that's uh, really quite underexposed. So just to correct those values now with a little bit more accuracy than some of the methods I've shown you before, I'm going to take the red channel here and just making sure I'm going to click on that dot up there in the top corner to make sure that's active. And just on the keyboard, as I press uh, left and right there, you can see, let me just move this window up here so you can see both things happening at once. Keep an eye on these values here and this dot up here. And as I, like I said, move the, or I'm pressing left on the um, arrow keys on the keyboard and the R value is actually moving up. So we can see there 202, 204. And I'm gonna aim for about 240. So I don't wanna go pure white with this. I'm just gonna go about 240. So uh, 242, that's close enough. And yeah, you can see here, this red point has moved all the way across to just about where the histogram drops off. And so I'll just do the same thing for the green channel. So I'm just gonna bring that all the way up there. You can see the values changing in the info box. 242 and then blue same thing again and as this kind of approaches the same values so 242 243 there you can see that's obviously brightened everything up quite a lot and in theory this point here where I've got this uh, first eyedropper that is my neutral white and like I said, the reason I didn't go to 255 is because I don't want that to actually be pure white. I still want there to be some data in there. And so really that's the first color correction that I did. But uh, it's still not perfect. So uh, let me just close these windows down. And yeah, it's still really kind of a bit bright now. And there's not much definition in the clouds. So what I did first time around, uh, just before I hit record, I uh, added a levels adjustment layer. And I'll just bring this uh, midpoint slider towards the right hand side there. And as I do that, you can see uh, we're getting some nice definition back into those clouds as it darkens down. And now the only thing as I'm sure you're uh, familiar with now is that as you make an adjustment, looking at the uh, one particular image or one particular part of the image, i.e. the sky, the rest of the image is also 
becoming quite a bit darker and that's not really what we want. So the main thing that I actually wanted to show you now, as well as the uh, color correction, was uh, the fact that, okay, all the videos I've shown you previously, we would create a layer mask and brush this uh, darkening effect out of the foreground here. But because it's quite intricate and I was only really going for a quick kind of fix when, uh, when I was doing this, uh, I used some different options. Uh, like I said, I don't think I've shown you before. So to get that, I'm going to right click on the levels adjustment and choose blending options. And what that brings up is this window here. So I'm looking at the blend if slider and I'll do some more tutorials on this later if, um, you know, if you want me to, but I'll just quickly run through here what that's going to do. Um, you know, this, uh, I won't go into too much detail at the moment, but Basically, what I'm going to try and do is keep the uh, darkening effect in the sky for the uh, levels layer and get rid of everything else from this levels adjustment layer as if we were masking out those uh, those darker bits, that have, well, those bits that have gone too dark. And so what I can do is, uh, because the sky is mostly blue, I'm going to pick the blue channel there. And then as I uh, move this slider up here, just I'm going to hold this uh, this little thing that we can move up and down and you can see as I move that up it's kind of blending or it's getting rid of the darker um, parts of this levels adjustment layer and that's uh, pretty effective already um, but what you can do also is uh, you know let's say I only wanted to go halfway and keep some of the uh, darkness in here and uh, you know blend some of it out and get the brighter beneath then you can actually split this to create like a smooth transition and so to do that you would press alt or option and click on this and as I drag that now that kind of split the uh, thing there you can see so let me just move that up um, maybe I'll just move this back down again and keep some of that darkness in there and just sort of move this up until we get a point where the blend looks uh, about right and we can see there, let me just preview that off and on. So we've got before uh, making this blend if change and then after. So that's kind of got rid of the darker parts and kept the uh, the dark parts in the sky. So let's hit OK to that and do a before and after on this um, on this levels layer now. And so it's kind of darkened the uh, the yellow foreground a little bit but not anywhere near as much as it was before before we did that blend and so that looks pretty good now but I just get the feeling that there's a, another little bit of a color cast come into play so um, let's add another curves adjustment layer and I'm just going to bring up my uh, my info panel again just to see if those white point values have, have changed any so we can see here 228, 229, 226 so because of this levels adjustment now, that white point that I set earlier has uh, has moved. So I'm just going to readjust that using this uh, second curves adjustment. So same as before, grab that top point and I'm going to put that up to about 240 again. And go 242. And same for the greens. So just on the left key, uh, the left arrow key on the keyboard. And then same again for blue. And there we go. That's just about what I wanted to show you, really. And <laughs> it's, you know, it's looking quite nice. And if I do the before and after, if I hide these three adjustments now, you can really see how flat and uh, lifeless that sky and the whole image really was. So let me just go back to before. You know, all of that definition in the sky has just totally disappeared. And really, it was only quite a quick job to um, to really liven that up a bit. And so, yeah, now we've made those corrections, we could uh, carry on just processing this image through the rest of the uh, workflow that I've shown you before in previous videos. And so that was it really for what I wanted to show you. If you have any questions about that blend if, then just let me know and I'll see if I can make some more tutorials that focus on that in a bit more detail. Otherwise, give it a go and uh, yeah, I'll speak to you soon. See you next time.